I'm going to tell y'all right off, I'm not a speaker. Uh, this is this is something I don't do. And, and uh, I'm just a dirt road bug man. That's all I am. And, and, uh, and I'm from Greenwood, Mississippi. I'm from, Green, I'm from Greenwood, Mississippi. I'm from Greenwood, Mississippi. And uh, that's about Central Delta, that north south. And uh, I graduated Mississippi State in 1976. In May, 36 hours on a Saturday, 36 later, 36 hours later, I was standing at my boss man's carport door waiting for him to come out to go to work. And that's all I've done since that day is, uh, is, is this for a living. Uh, I do cotton, corn, soybeans, peanuts, grain, sorghum, and wheat. I grew up on a rice farm back in the late 60s and early 70s before precision agriculture became a big thing. And my daddy gave me and my brother a shovel early in the morning. And, uh, and that's why when I got old enough, I had it to sand the ground. And, uh, and, and, and I helped my farmers with variety selection, fertilization, soil sampling. We do it on a grid, with satellite, disease, weeds, foliation, insects. I try not to get into the weeds as much as I can because it's time consuming. So I just, I just, I stick with, I stick with basically uh, uh, doing, doing mostly insects and diseases type deal. And first thing we have to do in the spring, we're getting ready to plant a cotton crop to figure out what we're going to do with our cotton seed after we make our variety of selections. We, uh, we have to get our, our seed treated. In years past, cruiser's been a big thing. On, on, I'd say back in, the, back in the day, say six, seven years ago, I'd probably say 60% of our cotton would have cruiser treated and 40% of it would be a midiclopid. And now, we don't use cruiser anymore. So in the last four or five years, it's just became ineffective on trip in our area. And we just don't use it. And we, we use imidacloprid in some forms. And we can see now, even now, that imidacloprid is not as effective as it once was. And, uh, and a couple of options Angus and them have come up with to help you bolster your imidacloprid treatment on the cotton seed would be uh, get a seed mixer and, and put 6.4 ounces of acetate to 100 pounds of cotton seed and mix it up and use it that way. Or you can get an infer sprayer and, and, and put out those rates of acetate and infer spray. That used to be impossible to get done, but now with people putting out starter fertilizers on, on, on corn and stuff like that, it's a lot of planters that are set up like that. And most of our planters we plant corn with, we, uh, we plant cotton with. So, so that you can get that done. And uh, early season thrip control is going to be, be, be really important this year because a lot of people are going to die chemical crops. And, and, and by label and by law, you're not going to be able to mix anything with dicamba. But a butter, you're not going to be able to put a herbicide in there, an insecticide in there. When you make a dicamba treatment on, on, a, on, a, on a cotton crop, you're going to have to use it by itself. Plus, I think the tips that you're going to use for dicamba are not going to be, would probably not be a good thrip, thrip, thrip poison tip in, thrip treatment <laughs> tip anyway. Angus is fussed at me about saying poison nowadays. I, well, you know, we've poisoned cotton for 30 years, and now we we make an application in a treatment. <laughs> and, uh, and I just, sometimes I forget. <laughs> but, uh, but we used to, we used to, when we, we, when we would have a trip problem early, we'd say, well, we've got a little flush of weeds, we finna put some Roundup out, we'll use a tip that we can kill both some weeds and some thrip with and, and do that. And, uh, but, but I don't think you're gonna be able to do that with dicamba treated. Let's see, this is, a, this is a study that John North, one of Angus graduate students did, on putting a neonic imidacloprid cruiser type thing on cotton seed and, and leaving it off. And, that's, and that breaks down to, to acres to about 60 or $70 an acre benefit by, by, by putting a, a neonic on, a, <coughs> on, your, on your cotton seed as a treatment. And, and, and once we get out of thrift season, Generally, generally around when, when a true, true, true node on a cotton is three to four nodes, cotton's getting a little horsepower, stays, stays small forever, it seems like, and then when you get three or four, three or four nodes on your cotton, it, it, it starts to get a little horsepower, start to grow. Uh, it's been getting warmer by the day since you planted, conditions are getting better, soil conditions, and cotton kind of takes off. And uh, around node five, you know, some cotton varieties are according to which one you plant, some of them are start squaring on node five, node six, node seven, it's according to what the characteristics of that variety are. But uh, I start sweeping my cotton around node five for plant bugs uh, flying in from the from out of the field. You're not dealing with nymphs then, uh, you're, you're uh, dealing with all winged ducks. So I, I start with, with, with a neonic. I either use a midicloprid or centric. And, and 
low number, most of the time starting out the year, you have low numbers early and uh, before they really get start picking up. And imidacloprid, to me, it's, it's a generic and you can use it at such high rates that you can, legal rates, that are, <laughs> that, you, that, it's, that, it's, that it's pretty cheap. And, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and if I have a little more involved numbers, that uh, I think Centric actually is probably better, but it's more expensive. But if my numbers are a little higher, I'll, 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 I'll use Centric there, but I try to get a midicloprid out first shot uh, on my square, on my early squaring cotton. And, and, and then about the third week of squaring, which will be, which will be your second application once your numbers start to build again after your first midicloprid shot, I try. I, I put six ounces of diamond either in, either in there with with midicloprid or centric. Most of the time, that time of year, I'm using centric for my second shot because plant bulbs numbers are a little heavier. I think it's a little better, and I put six ounces of diamond in there with that to uh, because it starts having some nymphs starting to starting to hatch in the field then or starting to see some show up. And then then after my numbers start to rebuild again, when I'm, and, and, and what I do is I sweep cotton with sweep net to a certain point, then it gets too big to sweep, then I use a shag cloth, and then I'll use the dirty square method looking for, for plant bug damage on squares. I, I do them all, and, it, and I just do it according to what, what, which one I think that cotton needs, how it needs to be looked at that day. And, and, and around my third application, this will be sometime right there around early bloom, right prior to bloom, uh, I'll get off the neonics because because things are getting more involved at that point in time, getting harder to harder to kill more numbers, and I'll go like three quarters of a pound of asphalt, six ounces of diamond. Now when I get that six ounces of diamond on there, I've got twelve ounces of diamond on my cotton, and it's and it's and it's about time nymph plant bugs start to start to hatch and, and start to be a start to be an issue. And Dr. Jeff Gore at Stoneville did research on that diamond on the two diamond shots right there ten twelve years ago. And I'm not I'm Jeff's not here, so I can't say exactly what it what it what it, exactly what it was. But in most instances, and I might even be all instances where he put two two twelve ounce shots of diamond on back to back right prior to bloom, it was it was like a his cotton yields went up every year. At the end of the year, he would pick more cotton when he did that. So that's just something we do in our area. And then once we get that done, we're about we're about bloom then. And I just call this the dog days of summer. Then we just we just grind it out to the end then. Those first, those first three applications are to me the most important because that's where your money is, and that's the, that's that's going to decide whether you make that extra good cotton crop, or uh, or not. It, uh, it's already been decided at this point just about because your money bowls are there or not there, and uh, then we just we just we rotate off into the grind of summer mainly mainly using the dirty square method of, of checking uh, checking for plant bugs. That's that's looking for uh, signs of a plant bug where it's fed on square. We've got Angus got a formula worked out where you can revert that back where it, it, it reverts back the same thresholds on on a drop cloth and sweeten it. And then we're going then, then at that point I'm gonna start putting a, a some kind of generic pyrethroid in with with acetate. And and that's serving two purposes. That's to bolster the plant bug efficacy of the acetate and also you're starting to have a little worm egg hatching this bow guard cotton. Some of it's starting to slip a little bit here and there. And that pyrethroid out there on a, on a regular basis when you plant bug poison will keep that, keep that in check most of the time. And then the, the things we just use on out to the end of the year, some of the things we'll alter, alternate in there is transform and, a, and, a, uh, and bifenthrin, a champ, transform and lambicide, something like that. Uh, and then we'll, we'll, on occasion we'll use biogen, biogen and bifenthrin, biogen and acetate. And, and, and I, just, I just use these as I, as, I, as I think I need to. And then if you ever see the inkling of an aphid, you can, you can go with transform, which is a dang good plant bug poison, it's kind of pricey, but you can go with transform uh, at either the half rate of three quarters of an ounce with some acetate and bifenthrin or transform by itself as a standalone at an ounce and a half with a pyre, with a pyrethroid, and 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 you won't have an aphid problem. It, it's just overkill on aphids. Uh, aphids never will become an issue uh, in in that in that in that cotton uh, once once you get a shot of transform out there. The bow guard cotton, the slippage of the of the of the heliophis in the bow guard cotton has always been an issue. Uh, you can handle that most of the time with a pyrethroid in there with the plant bug poisons, but some varieties, your, your uh, phytos and tight cottons and some of those where the genes not expressed as strong, maybe as others, maybe needs a little help sometime. 
And I've noticed over the years things that we never used to do, we start to do, or pe people do it here, somebody will do it over there, and in a matter of three or four years, it's the normal of what you, everybody does everywhere. And the new thing that, that people are starting to do now is put out Prevathon on Bogard cotton, or besieged with Prevathon and karate. Coming in our area around June 15th, July 15th, July 20th, we always have a real high <coughs> flush of worm eggs come through our cotton. Uh, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50% worm egg lays. At that point right there, it's, 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 it's a move been made lately where people are starting to put a little Prevathon out. And if you do that, you have solved your problem. I mean, you won't, at the end of the year, most years what I do at the end of the year to see what I, how I stand, I'll, I'll by about the time cotton starts to crack, but bottom bows do, I'll, I'll walk out my truck, I'll walk, I'll walk out and pull 25 bows walking out. Just eye bow, pull it. Don't look for a good one, don't look for a bad one. Just see one and pull it. And I walk and I'll pull 25 and I'll stop my, and I'll look at them one by one and throw them on the ground. I walk back to the truck, pull 25 going back to the truck just to see what season long worm control I've gotten with the BT gene or not gotten. And it generally sometimes it always is somewhere in that 2 to 3% bowl damage. And uh, you can live with that because we've lived with it forever and still made big crops. But you, you do that right there and that number's probably going to go down, which will probably make the yield come up just like with the, with the diamond. And, uh, Spider mites, if I had to say one, one insect that sold more, made people sell more cotton pickers and shut down more gins, it's that insect right there. About 10, 12, 15 years ago, we got to where spider mites became an issue every year. We used to have them just up and down dusty turn roads, down gravel roads, drafty conditions, uh, but, but it got to a point where we had spider mites every year. And, and I think that's even one of my fields there in that Kruger in the lane. <laughs> but, that's, but that's late. I mean, you see cotton's opening, so that's, that's not, that wasn't an issue on the yield. But, but uh, that, that right there, uh, we couldn't control them. Back 15 years ago, we had comite, we had, we had uh, kelthane, stuff like that, and then Zephyr came into the country and, uh, by Syngenta. And people were struggling to make a living farming cotton. The money wasn't there. Then spider mites come in. So then we're going to talk about putting a shot of Zephyr out. It cost $22, $24 an acre just for the poison, plus not counting the application. And that was, a, that was the straw that broke the cotton camel back right there. It's a, and if you had to do it twice, cotton farmers in the, in the central delta right there just threw their hands up a lot of them. So we can't we ain't going to do this no more. It's too easy to make a corn crop. It's too easy, easy to make a bean crop. We're not going to do it. Well, that's, that's where we were then. And now what I try to do, is, is I still use abomectin, which is Zephyr, a form of it. And it's, it's generic now, and you can afford to use it at high rates, label rates. And, uh, and I try to find, catch my spider mites when I first see the inkling of them, when I'm traveling from farm to farm in the community. If I see a spider mite problem over here starting, just the inkling of them, just a little graining of the cotton leaf, I'll, 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 I'll make a note of it. And, and if you'll treat early seeds, if you'll treat low populations, of, uh, of spider mites, but I would make you can you can you can do pretty good on them and don't, if you don't wait until they get a full blown full blown thing going on you, and uh, and that's what I try to do, and uh, uh, just just from an economical standpoint, and 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 I have put two shots of abomectin out and felt like it it, it, it held fair, uh, and and that's how I treat those. And uh, we talked about cotton aphids a minute ago. That that's not going to be an issue right there if you if you implement. Uh, some form of transform in, in, in your plant bug pollen as you go, and then, uh, and then disease, will, disease will generally generally wipe them out at some point. You go out there that morning, you smell that smell, you know you got them. And, uh, and in my business, what I've, what I've seen over the years is, 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 is a lot of the people that were in my business that were, that were 45 years old, 40 years old, I thought those were, were old men when I was 21 getting in this business. A lot of people are dead now. And a lot of them have faded off in, into the into the sunset. You don't have to see them anymore. And I made a decision when I was about 50 years old. I wasn't going to let that happen to me. That uh, that uh, I, I, you, you come to these meetings like this right here, and you you say, "Where's old Bruce Pittman?" You say, "Well, I ain't seen him, and you don't come to meetings much no more." You know, and I heard he ain't got much much going on no more in his business. Well, I made my I saw too many people get up around 60, 61, 62 years old, and just kind of let time pass them by. They got lethargic, and they and they just got complacent in what they were doing. And they didn't keep up, and they didn't go continue the education and go to meetings and learn. And I made a, I made a uh, decision that I wasn't going to let that happen to me, that I was going to stay relevant as I could, as long as I could. And 
another little, little thing I want to make is that we, uh, Dr. Catshot and uh, all our researchers at Mississippi State and, and specialists in Stoneville, we are very fortunate, very lucky in the state of Mississippi to have them. The Mississippi Ag Consultant Association, which I'm a <coughs> member of, we work closely with them hand in hand. We don't have any problems there. They are our, they are our friends, and we appreciate everything they do. And one other thing right now that this, this a pet peeve with me is this target spotting back bacteria blight on this cotton. You know, back in the old days when you grew 213 and Delta Pine 50, Delta Pine 20, uh, 825, you, you'd start out fruiting the cotton crop. It'd just get prettier as the crop come on. It'd just get bigger. It'd just get more bowled up, and it'd just fall down in a pile, and, and it'd be right there waiting on you when you pick it. Now, you can do the same thing, and about three weeks prior to your first crack bowl, all your leaves start falling off on the ground. You done worked all year. <coughs> You, you, you got all the investment in it you put into it. Your leaves start falling off on the ground. Fruit starts falling off on the ground, and nobody seems to have a handle on this. That's just that's just something that we've created somehow in, with, with with in the varieties, I think. And then of course keeping up with the resistant weeds, you got to keep keep up there. Resistant insects field changes all the time. Uh, that never changes. You know, uh, uh, 10, 10, 12 years ago, I thought it was going to come a time when you wouldn't need a bug man. And, uh, but, but that, but that day is not ever going to come. It's going to take a set of eyes and a mind out in the field to decide what a farmer needs to do. Technology will ever, ever do that. Just to let them know that everything is okay or not okay. And of course, monitoring groundwater and trying to preserve as much water and, and do that as, as, as thoughtful as we can and then keeping up with precision agriculture. And that's just kind of the way I approach the crop every year. Uh, and that's it. Any questions? Angus would be glad to answer. <laughs> Y'all have any questions for Bruce? As a, as a crop consultant, and I'm not talking about weeds or anything like that, but from start to finish from an insect side standpoint, how many total dollars per acre do you try to, to my, zoom in on? My, what, how much do you spend? I figure it up every fall. Base, I just take, I'll take a couple of clients, and I'll just sit down in my recliner at night, and I'll get my, my, my little black book out. And uh, I keep a daily day book, and, and and I'll go back. And at the end of the year, most years, unless unless now this new Prevathon thing coming in here, but as a general rule, somewhere between sixty-five and seventy-five dollars an acre, insecticide cost is what is what is what I have on a cotton crop. Seventy-five will be on the high side. Now that's just foliar spray. Right? That's just foliar spray. Well, yeah, yeah. I don't count application costs, airplane costs. Uh, I don't figure surfactants in there. I use cheap surfactant. I don't use I don't use these surfactants that cost a dollar and fifty two dollars like I use eighty twenty and stuff like that. When I when I put it, if, if where they need some some insecticides, you know you got you got to use special things and do special things to do that. But, but as a general rule, I just put eighty twenty in there with mine, quarter percent, something like that. And uh, about about seventy five dollars will match me out. And uh, I'm conservative. Try to do. We generally we generally average somewhere, and we have plant bug problems where I am. You know, I don't forgot your ain't for eight or something. Remember, huh? Two thousand seven. Angus and them, they they their research plots up. I knew when they ate Angus and his research plots up at Stonewall that I that I that I hadn't done too bad. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we generally we generally average somewhere I would say between five and seven. And then we got hill parts of the delta, hill parts right up in the hill from the delta that might not pull a plant both twice a year. I'm talking about just right up in the hills. You go down and I and I had an area in the Avalon area, which is between Grenada and Greenwood, where and it's in the delta right at the base of the hills, where I where I where I had a farm there for years and it just absolutely there's no plant bugs there. I told Angus, I called him one day, if you figure this out, Angus, you're going you're gonna to go down in the annals or somewhere of being a smart man if you figure out why it's not plant bugs at all at, uh, at Avalon, Mississippi. And you can go right down the road to Greenwood and they'll, they'll try to touch you off. But we generally average, I'd, I'd, say, I'd say five to seven plant bug treatments a year. Do you have is that a lot? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, the area where you where you live, whatever. How, how what is what is what is that compared? West, West Tennessee probably average. Well, that's that's where our hill areas do. That's not the Delta. It's a whole different animal in Mississippi today. I mean, a whole different animal. And then, and on top of that, not only that, they're hard to kill there too. And we could kill them in the hills just 
just pretty easy. Still question, how far away from I had a slide in here and I pulled it out, but we have a graduate student right now that's working on that and Scott Stewart does too in Tennessee. Uh, they told me last time I talked that thing was somewhere possibly around 2020, but I would say you could probably add to that. It was always a little longer than they think. Uh, but we're looking at it. Long enough to go broke. Do what? Long enough to go broke. Yeah, and the thing that's going to be interesting about this trait when it comes out, it's not 100% trait. Best I can tell, it looks like it's going to be 60 to maybe 60%. So what we're trying to work on right now, we're trying to figure out, okay, if you got something that's giving you already 60% control, when this stuff hits, what are the thresholds going to be? Does it need to be the same? And that's what we're working on right now ahead of the launch, trying to figure out when do you need to spray this stuff. There's no doubt it works. And the biggest benefit we're probably going to see is that also it is really good on thrips. I mean, real good on thrips. So uh, we're trying to figure out, so when it hits the market, we're spraying at three bucks, five row feet now. Does it need to change to five or six? That's what we're, we're trying to figure out now. It doesn't need to stay the same. But it will definitely provide some benefits and sub threshold protection. We're saving about, on average, about one and a half or two sprays, just strictly going on thresholds in that kind. And that's just basically a little list, of kind of what I do. But I mean, and I'll, I'll get up uh, uh, one morning, go to work, and not do anything I just talked about. Well, I'll be completely something different. You know, but you don't never know what you're gonna do when you leave the house or you get home that night. And uh, but that's just basically the kind of way it is. I've got a question about that new cop mark over here, Richard. The uh, on your cotton that you put Spravathon on, have you seen where you have? Uh, I just want you to speak to the factor like whether you have more plant bug problems by not. I'm not saying that my fencer is controlling plant bugs, but it sure seems to help. It helps. That's, that's so where you put it in there. Are you having more plant bug problems where you put the put the uh, when we don't put the, on? We see we don't do. You were not going to do that but once, Rich. So. Yeah, oh, I know you're doing that one bird. So but you're still spraying, say, two weeks out from Gravathon, are you still have to put my fan? Oh yeah, oh yeah. That okay. time of year we have to put a pipe. You can't if you, you put three quarter pound or, or eight tenths of pound acetate on plant bug after uh, in mid season on the and I, that, I mean, you will kill it. Okay. You well, will I, not kill I was wondering if y'all have the same trouble we were. Yeah. You got, okay, you are you seeing you is your is the uh, pipe causing you more spider mite problems, you think, or it might be. Pyrethroids might be, but 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 we can't control plant bugs without it. Okay, well, I, I agree with you. So that's I mean, it's just a necessary evil. Okay. You know, if I ever buy a fifth one, kill a spider mite. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want any more. <laughs> All right, Angus.